what Kyle, what would what would be the one thing that you would want to start with? Because I know you have some story, some various stories, but what would be the one story that you'd really want to start with to kind of help ease everybody into the experiences that you've had? All right. Well, um, I guess you could say I'll I'll start with one that I haven't posted. I didn't really think it was super spooky or unique enough to put on online. Okay. Uh, but we can talk about it here. This this actually happened prior to the first post I made. Uh, and this happened when I was six years old. Uh, it was something that at the time I didn't think was a paranormal event. It was kind of only something that I clued into a lot, lot longer after when my, my family was talking with me about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of a strange one. At the time, I we were briefly living in Ontario, and we, well, yeah, we were we were kind of just outside of the Toronto area for a few years at the time. Okay, and we stayed in an apartment that had a history. It was an apartment building that had previously mostly burnt down the entire floor that we were living on had a fire on it and that happened a few years prior to us living there so i think that's kind of where things came from okay uh but while i was staying in that place as a child i remember that i often had like a friend or like some sort of imaginary friend coming to me really and exactly yeah as you know and at it was normal for kids to have imaginary friends sure. so for the longest time my my parents thought nothing of it but it was a it was a young boy who would always be he would just show up he would come out of my closet essentially and he would just stand there and he was holding a basketball all the time that's the that's the weird part about it he always had a basketball huh. um and i would just say hi or something and he would just kind of sit in the corner and look at me and i guess it's a weird imaginary friend because there wasn't really much interaction other than that there was just someone who would show up and and sit down and and so you didn't Um, feel threatened or anything by him obviously no well i I was a i was a really trusting kid so like in my opinion it was either like something i just imagined or maybe there was a neighbor's kid who was coming by because my parents often had the adult neighbors coming over to to have coffee or to chat. So I thought maybe it might've been one of their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I never even really brought this up to my parents at the time. It was whenever later events happened and we were discussing the later events or encounters that I had. And I brought that up because um, I wanted their take on it. I thought maybe it might be involved. And they said, none, none of the neighbors who ever came over actually brought their kids. And uh, then we found out the history of the the building from my dad, who was actually the building supervisor there at the time. And he he knew the history of the floor. And supposedly there was a family living in our apartment and they had a young boy. Okay. No confirmation on if he played basketball or anything like that. But but they were the yeah. ones, were they caught in that fire then? Everyone in the three units on the corner of the building we lived on perished really? in that fire. Yeah, most of the most of the building was un, unburnt. Most of the people survived, but those three apartments. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Is that something that? Um, how many years prior to you living there did it happen? I think it was three, from what I remember. Three years, so still f- fairly new then. So it's something that they must have recently fixed up right away because you said it was only three units right everybody else was fine so they must have had it under control was this like a nighttime fire then that they couldn't get out in time it apparently actually happened during the day really yeah huh that is really interesting that um you know you hear a lot of times with these apartment fires that there are people who are trapped, but sometimes it's usually because they're sleeping, they don't even realize something's happening. But that's interesting that three uh, separate um, groups of people, so three uh, apartments, correct? Yeah. Were caught on fire, and then they, the occupants of those apartments then all perished from that. And that's really sad. And, and um, you know, come to think of it then, did you ever, was this, now we're going to call him your imaginary friend, but 
he, mm-hmm. I still also want to call him this entity because this entity obviously came to you um, at a time when you were able to see him because I do believe that kids have the ability to see things that adults can't see because we put on the, I think the veil to all of this is thicker for adults. We can't always see what's there. We sense it. There's always a sense that adults will have like an intuition, a presence of some kind, but they can't see it like kids do. Now, do you think that did this entity stay while you were at the apartment and then like when you left, did he stay there or did he follow you at all? That entity actually stayed there. Okay. So uh, essentially once we moved out of the apartment, when we were moving to New Brunswick, uh, Mm -hmm. that was like the last I saw of that. Okay. Interesting. That's really interesting. So, but that's not the last time that you've had a, a paranormal encounter. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave. so it's almost like you were you were open to the experience, and then all of a sudden, more stuff started coming through for you. Yeah, I, I think being open as a kid and and having that kind of experience happen just kind of made it, or maybe I don't know if I invited it to keep happening by mm-hmm. by not reacting to it in a negative way or something, but those experiences definitely followed me for the rest of my life so, so far. <laughs> so when was the next time that you had a encounter? Was it still as a youth or did it kind of take a while to come back? They kind of have always continued in some way. I, okay. I think I've honestly only lived in, I've probably lived in 15, 20 spots since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I think in only two of them, I've had absolutely nothing out of the ordinary really? happen. Okay, well, that's really uh, yeah, interesting but, then. Um, I want to talk about those, but at the same time, I am kind of curious. In the spots that did not have anything, any activity, were those newer or were those older? Because a lot of times it seems like the activity stays in locations that are older and have more history to them. In one case, it was like brand bank and new. The, the place had just been completed. Okay. Uh, and then the other one, it was older, but if there was any kind of feeling I got out of the house, it was like a really positive one. Okay. So maybe if, if there was anything there, it, it would have been good, I suppose. Yeah. But Okay. And that makes sense too, because just for people who are watching this or listening to it, uh, they need to know that just because you don't experience something, it, like you said, if there's a good vibe to it, it might just have this positive energy where they don't need to be seen at all if that makes any sense. Like they don't, they don't, I think that there is a level of understanding on the other side that they know the fear that comes out of being seen by us in the physical. And we're all going to be there one day, but it's, it's almost like maybe, maybe there's rules or regulations. I'm I'm not sure. It's just uh, one of those things that I am open to, but there's an idea maybe that they don't, um, the good ones don't need to bother you. They just give you the good energy and they just let you live kind of a thing. And then the other ones are a little mischievous and they like to play games with you kind of a thing. I, I kind of like to think that spirits are pretty much just still acting like people, you know, mm-hmm. there's going to be some good eggs and some bad eggs and some, t- some are pranksters. Some just like to, to relax. Mm-hmm. So tell me then, um, when you started to move to these different locations, then what other types of experiences did you have? They always changed a lot. I feel like I've seen a bit of everything at this point. The So I can start maybe talking about the second big encounter okay. here that was on, uh, I think, maybe the post that got you in contact with me. So this was right after we had moved out of the previously mentioned apartment. Mm-hmm. And we moved to what was my father's hometown in rural New Brunswick. The place has a population of like a thousand people. It's um, it's mostly a retirement community and it's really old. It was one of the first established towns on that coast of Canada. Okay. So there's a lot of houses there that are at least 150, 200 years old. Oh, wow. Some, some older, some newer, but that's kind of the average. Mm-hmm. The, the house we had moved into, mostly because of how affordable it was from the location, was located 
right next to a graveyard. And as soon as we moved in, it was kind of a, a freaky house to, to describe it. There were a lot of things that happened that because I was young, I didn't attribute to paranormal. But mm -hmm. there are things that as an adult, you know, wouldn't really happen on their own. Mm -hmm. Like faucets turning themselves off and on really? appliance turning themselves off and on yeah i mean and but just so uh, just so people know that is um you, you got to think as a entity you don't always have the ability to control and i think it takes a lot of energy to control a physical environment if i'm not mistaken it takes a lot of it takes a lot of energy to move something in this physical without a physical body, without controlling a physical body. You're so turning on appliances and that, I mean, that kind of thing is just really, um, that, that poltergeist must've been very active and very needing of attention or something to that effect. It, it kind of felt like there was just someone living in the house going about their life almost but they really? they wanted us to know that we, they were around that's crazy that's crazy and so did now in these instances did you ever name your entity because a lot of times people will give it a name because it's just so you know it's just part of your family essentially like it's part of your residence um, for whatever reason, me and my sisters actually called it Al, which isn't something I mentioned, but we, we just decided to call it Al for some reason. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, that's, it's that's not like, did it come across as like a male type figure? We assumed it was a male. Yeah. Uh, it was cause it, it, so we essentially named it after other events that happened there. We, we thought it was probably all the same entity maybe mm -hmm. um but yeah we, we thought it was like a male presence maybe just like some friendly yep. adult now as kids you had to have been interested in communicating with it did you ever do anything that sparked a communication a lot of times kids will dabble in the ouija board but there's other ways that they are capable of communicating but did you guys ever try to get any type of response out of it and do an actual communication? I guess you could say it was the only communication I ever really had was, was part of like the larger encounter. So to just kind of dive into that story. Sure. Um, so for the audience here, this was uh, one event where I had a friend sleeping over and my parents were out for the night. Okay. So it was me my friend who was a boy the same age as myself around 10 at the time okay and my two sisters and my sisters would have been upstairs my friend and i would have been downstairs where there was just the one bedroom and were your and sisters the, older like, than you one of my sisters is older and one of them is younger okay okay yeah so the older one is like your typical responsible sister who would do like babysitting and stuff and, and right. the other one was your typical bratty younger sister okay perfect i know i know exactly that scenario Okay, so so you guys are you had a friend over for sleepover. Parents are gone. Yeah, and then so the, the stage is set by essentially nothing abnormal had happened other than the taps or the the appliances at this point. And we've been here for about three weeks. Okay, maybe maybe less, maybe a little bit more, but around three weeks. Um, and it was me and my friend alone in the basement at around midnight is when things started going a little funky. Okay. And so just to give the we, audience we a little bit of a background, you, you, you've you heard tapping before. Yeah. And, and we've heard tapping and, and sounds like that, but it was, it was mostly the sounds that happened later that night that were more likely to be paranormal probably. And it was the sounds of like clinking, almost like chains Really? And moaning. Yeah. What? Are you serious? That's, um, wow. Okay. Keep going. I'm sorry. That's, I think instantly of, um, you know, almost like your classic, uh, your classic ghost. I mean, something that you'd see on TV where chains rattle, there's a moan, but that's the, that is, uh, probably really horrifying 
to hear? Well, so at the time, I hadn't even ever seen horror movies yet. So as later in life, this sounded like a cliche, but yeah. it, it was this, it was like the sounds of chains or metal dragging, but like not like a hard metal scraping or something. And almost like someone in pain, you know, when you stand up too fast and you hurt your back, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of the sounds it sounded. Like. And it was like an older male voice. Um, so I had been laying down trying to sleep and not being able to sleep. And I was hearing these sounds. My friend I thought was asleep on the floor either got woken up or was awake when these sounds were happening and they started panicking and were scared. And, and they tried to wake me up, not knowing I was sitting there listening to this. Really? And yeah. So where was this coming from? So if let's say I was on the bed, he was on the floor and we had a yeah. door to where my feet would be maybe like eight feet away. It okay. would be like on the other side of the door. Just on the other side. So in the hall somewhere, then outside your yeah. room. Yeah. And were you on the first floor like or second floor? We, yeah. So this was like a two floor house. We were on the first floor, which would have been like the basement. So this was all below ground. Okay. Okay. So you guys are down there and that, that's your room. Right where you've always yeah. where you've always stayed. Yeah, well, while I was in the house, that was the place I I lived the entire time. That one room. Okay, and have you had any experiences like that before? That was the first like that there. Okay, so I bet then that really that really probably petrified both of you guys, and you both heard it. We both heard it. I know because I was sitting there listening to it, and I was scared. And and he took the time to like shake me and and ask me if I heard it. Yeah. And what about what time frame you said this was? This would have been around midnight. Or oh, around so the witching hour of things. Okay. Just about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. So this is really fascinating then. Dan, what about your sisters? So my sisters apparently were unaware of anything spooky happening that night. And did you run out to go get them at all? No, so well because this the only way to get upstairs would be to go through that door. So we were kind of just stuck there. <laughs> so you guys were just petrified. You did not want to go out there and see, experience what was there. No, uh, this was probably the most terrifying thing I experienced at that point in my life. I didn't want to go anywhere near it. How, I was how, starting to pull the blankets up over my head. How long did it last, the experience? So that part of the night probably only went on for like a few minutes like okay. at the most 15 minutes, I would say. Okay. Well, you say that part of the night, was there more that happened? Yeah. So that's kind of how things just started. The rest of the stuff I don't, it's, it's kind of hard to say with, with a straight face. Cause even I don't know if I truly believe that happened other than being told it did. Mm -hmm. But so after the noises, my friend asked me to turn on the light cause okay. he thought that might make it less scary. Right. And after, and essentially I finally worked up the courage. I got up out of my bed and I turned on the lamp that was at the end of the night table, just at the foot of my bed. Okay. And so, uh, essentially he immediately just pretty much screamed. It, it was like a loud sound and he had his mouth open and he was just pointing at the ceiling and I didn't know what he was pointing at. So I looked up. And on the ceiling, now illuminated, or unless it was there before, after, I don't know, but there was just the shadows of like hands and arms coming out of the ceiling. If you could really? just picture a, like the entire ceiling just covered and they're just grasping down towards us. They're not long enough to like go down and reach us, but they're, you can see them coming out and they're so, moving around. And Wow. So they weren't physical. They were just that they shadow, like shadows, like shadow yeah. entities, almost like shadows coming down and they were moving and clearly nobody else was moving. Like you guys were probably petrified, scared to death, looking up at it. Nothing else in your room was making, casting those shadows from the light. No, and well, I had a pretty Spartan room. It was essentially my bed, a dresser and the end table with the lamp on it. And yeah. then that was the only only real things in there besides a calendar. So what did you guys do after seeing that? 
Well, to be honest, it just kind of led to something else. Um, he didn't move at all. I got back in bed because I had to stand up to turn the lamp on. My very next move was to jump back into bed. And I started to try to throw the covers back over myself because I didn't know what to do at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing we know, it's totally silent. It's pretty well totally dark. But we see something come out of the wall. It, really? So it it looked like the shadow of a tall man if he was drenched or wrapped, I guess, completely in like a black cloth. Okay. You couldn't see any of their features, but you could make I could make out that it was like he had the head and arms and a body and that it was like some kind of cloth because you could see parts like waving around almost. You think maybe like a cape or something to that effect? Maybe like a cape or like a cloak or something like that. Okay. And the weirdest thing about it was that we couldn't see anything in the room, but we could see that. It was like they were covered in some kind of glow. Huh. And they were holding something. It was a huge book, like an old encyclopedia or something like that. It was okay. like comically large compared to any book you would normally see anyone have. And they're holding that in one arm and they just walked through the wall on my left. It would have just been a few feet away from the foot of my bed. And they just came into the room and they didn't do anything threatening. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything particularly scary. They just, it just came into the room and it pointed at me. It, 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 it moved like it was looking at me and it pointed directly at me. And then it motioned towards its book. Mm. And Around this time, my friend and I were kind of freaking out because mm -hmm. we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know if this was connected to something else. I, I was hoping to, I looked out the window, I remember, to see if maybe my parents were coming home because I was hoping somebody could just walk in here or they might hear us making noise or something. Right. But that's when I noticed or around when I noticed it was totally black. Normally you could see light shining through the window, even if you couldn't see a vehicle or something like that pulling in. Cause there was like a nearby light for the house. Okay. A street light was, outside. Yeah. And it was totally dark. And okay. normally you could see the cemetery through there, like by moonlight or something, even if the light wasn't on. So you, well, you, you mean to say you could see the cemetery from your house? Yeah, so when I say the house was next to the cemetery, I mean the, the house was the previous uh, grave tender's house. No so, way. Yeah, so if you looked out the window from my room, because I was at ground level, the first thing you would see is like not even 20 feet away, just headstones for as far as you could see, because it was just at, right at the level of the house. Oh, I want to thank you for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. You know, we talk about a lot of crazy stuff here, so if you could... If you want to hear more, just like and subscribe to the channel. It would really help us out a lot. And plus, if you have a crazy story, whether it be an alien abduction, near-death experience, or something of the paranormal, or a glitch in the matrix, please let us know. Share it in the comments. We'd love to have you on the show.